This is Alex Biriak, Senior VP at Jet Lending. This short educational video is going to be on how to com comp and compare properties when you increase the square footage. Now, there are two ways of looking at this for your subject property. One way is that you make the increased square footage seamless to the house. That means the increased square footage was built and it looks like it was always there. It makes functional sense for the home. The second way is that you are enclosing a patio. Uh, you still have exterior doors and windows that look into this room. It's obvious that it was never part of the house, but now it is. You cannot use the same price per square foot on both of these options. When you do it right and the increased square footage looks to be seamless and always part of the property, it's reasonable that you would get full value for the price per square foot in relation to the size in which you made this property. When it's not seamless with the house, it's reasonable to only accept 50% of the new square foot value. That means if you had a thousand square foot house and it was $100 a square foot and you increased the size of the house by 100 square feet, that 100 square feet would command about $50 a square foot, not the $100 a square foot previously mentioned. We also cover this in garage conversions educational video. The garage conversion will still must be seamless with the house. Watch that you are not converting a room that is now lower than the house and is obviously a garage. Other thing to consider is when garage conversions is that one of the surrounding inventory. If all the houses in the area have garages and yours does not, this may increase days on market and decrease value for that new increased square footage. Try to find a comparable that have garage conversions to compare with and not original larger houses, since you may find that your conversion does, meet, does not meet the value of those that were originally that large with a garage. Make sure you would tend to the exterior of this option as well. Make the converted area seamless with the exterior of the house to increase the value. Do not do all the work on the inside just to leave the outside still looking like a garage. Make sure you go over this with your contractors and codes in the area and make sure your ceiling height is the right dimension to be considered for the added square footage. It will hurt you on the sale when you are considering that you have a 2000 square foot house now and you find that you have seven foot ceilings or a pitch in the room where you cannot count some, some or all the new square footage that you worked on. One more thing on garage conversions, whether you are buying or building, if adding a square foot over a garage Make sure you look at the codes and area requirements so the appraiser can use this as added square footage. Nothing can be more frustrating than projecting your cost on one square foot only to find after you bought the property, the square footage is not going to be used by the appraisers for the sale or refinance of the property due to something as simple as connecting the property with a roof line or a breezeway. Well, that's the basics. It's not everything, but it's a good start. If you'd like a free estimate on your next flip or hold deal, use this QR code. Give us a call, a text, email. You can chat on our website. Let's get your deals closed within three days from clear to close from title and a prayers report back in and have all the comfort of doing all your real estate investment loans and draws online. See you next time.